Welcome back everybody to another episode of Gemology for Schmucks. My name is Peter Nelson and I'm here to guide you in everything you need to know about gemstones. At least most things. Last week I just purchased a tiny little but super adorable star sapphire and I just wanted to talk about it for a minute because I like it so much. Also I realized it was a great teachable moment because I have a couple of other synthetic star sapphires and many people are asking me how do I know the difference. Fortunately star sapphires are nice and convenient oftentimes. There are some examples that it can be a little bit more difficult but we're going to talk about those today. Oftentimes synthetic star sapphires like this Chonko right here are very easy to tell because of a couple of things. First off their star looks fake. Now what does that mean? Once you've seen enough of them you'll start to get a feeling. Now there are some stars that are natural that are also very intense and that's part of the giveaway for synthetic star sapphire as well is it just feels too strong, it feels too thick for whatever reason. Now that is not a scientific way to think about this, it's just an indicator that may give you a feeling. Then you look for evidence. Now what kind of evidence do we look for? With synthetic stars the fastest and easiest thing to do is probably turn the stone over and see if you can find what we have in this ring right here. On the back side it's got a perfect example of curved color banding. A lot of synthetic sapphire is made this way. Synthetic ruby as well. At the end of the day it's all corundum. Chemically and crystallographically it's the same. So curved color banding comes because of melt processes of synthetic stone manufacturing. So that's flame fusion or the polder Jakrowski method. If you see curved banding it's proof of synthetic. You're not going to find that in a natural stone. I've seen some weird examples but that's usually because of straight color banding that has in fact been carved or weathered in a way that makes it appear as if it's curved but it's not, that's optics. The natural alternative you will actually find in this ring and I bought the stone for this ring back at a mining locality years ago before I knew anything about how to tell about the qualities of a stone. I knew how to discern whether the stone was natural or synthetic which is part of why I bought the stone but nothing of value because value really is not the main topic of gemology. For those of you that are looking to study gemology or thinking about going to gemology school please do keep that in mind. There's a lot of information that you get in studying gemology. Price information is not one of them. You have to spend time dealing in gemstones before you will know price. You can learn about qualities and values of stones but price is something that fluctuates with time. So the only way that you're going to accurately understand price is by accurately understanding the qualities of the stone and the rarity of this quality compared to other qualities. Very complex. So in this sapphire right here instead of having curved color banding it has hexagonal banding. Sometimes depending on how the sapphire is cut it may just look straight and you can find that same kind of banding in many other stones. Amethyst is another typical one where you will find straight color banding. But with sapphires because of its crystal structure we're looking for hexagonal banding. So hexagonal being like the outline of a hexagon. Sometimes depending on how the crystal is cut you can find a full hexagon shape. Sometimes it's only part of it but if you can find the angle of 120 degrees and 60 degrees then that gives us very strong indication that the stone is natural. Not exact proof because there are ways to do that with certain synthetic growth methods. Dun dun dun. And in order to distinguish those deep fakes we're using that term a lot these days aren't we? No politics! You're going to need to know more about the inclusion scenes of stones natural and synthetic but most of the time you're not going to have that issue. If you see hexagonal growth and a few other features to support your indication of natural over synthetic then you can have confidence to buy. Another key feature in natural stones to look for is iridescent silk. So if I take this bebe over here and I pull out my loop and I look at it and I move it back and forth in the light I should be able to see iridescent silk. Iridescent being rainbow colored and I should actually be able to see those needles. Synthetic stars however you will not be able to see the individual needles clearly because they are so 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 tiny because of the manufacturing process. Now star sapphires are not the only ones that will have that hexagonal growth. If you look at other types of sapphires such as this rather dark sapphire you may also be able to find that hexagonal growth. Now do beware though this stone is suspect. Even though we have found that hexagonal growth we are confident that this may be an earth mined stone that does not give us an indication that the stone is completely untreated. So this stone was actually rejected from one of the labs I frequently use because there is a suspicion that the stone may have been treated with one of the modern treatments that has not yet fully been disclosed and it's not readily detectable. 
So labs with a good reputation will just tell you, we don't have the technology in our lab to distinguish this. You'll need to send it to an advanced lab. Thanks guys. No, seriously though, I would rather be told we don't know, we're not going to take your money, than have somebody pretend that they know or just give me a certificate that helps me to sell my stone with deceit. Because I actually value my integrity, also my reputation. One last little tidbit about synthetic star sapphires, not all of them, but some of them, if you look at the back of the stone, you may see an inscribed cursive L. That L is one of the indicators of the company that makes these star sapphires and star rubies at least historically. Not all pieces will have that. This piece right here does not have it. But I love this particular stone because that curved banding is so, so clear. And that's why I have a little truth window on the back. My ring of wisdom. I learned so much from this. So there you go. You got a couple of things about sapphires and star sapphires. If you got more questions, leave them in the comments section down below or head over to gemshepherd.com where you can contact me directly or read more blogs about investing in gemstones and gemology. Otherwise, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, tell all of your friends about me, and until next time, bye bye